and welcome to the next edition of the Briefings Direct Voice of Innovation podcast series. I'm Dana Gardner, Principal Analyst at Inter Arbor Solutions, your host and moderator for this timely discussion on architecting businesses for managing ongoing disruption. As enterprises move past crisis mode in the response to the COVID-19 pandemic, they require a systemic capability to better manage shifting market trends. Stay with us now as we examine how Hewlett Packard Enterprise Point Next Services advises organizations on using digital transformation to take advantage of the new and emerging opportunities. Here to share the Point Next view on transforming businesses to effectively innovate into a new era of pervasive digital business is Craig Partridge, Senior Director Worldwide, Digital Advisory and Transformation Practice Lead at HPE Point Next Services. Welcome back, Craig. Hey, Dana, good to speak to you again, how are you? I'm great, we're glad you're here. Craig, how has the response to the pandemic accelerated the need for comprehensive digital transformation? Well, I mean, we speak to a lot of customers around the world, and I think the one thing that we're picking up very commonly is uh, counterintuitive a little bit. I, I think at the, at the beginning of the pandemic, in fact, at the beginning of any kind of major disruption, there's a sense that companies will sort of put the brakes on a little bit, slow everything right down. And for sure that happened right out of the gates as we went through this period, you know, preserving cash and liquidity kicked in and, and a kind of minimum viable operating model emerged and people were reluctant to invest. But as they begin to see the shifting landscape in industries, I think what we're beginning to now see is a recognition that those that are pivoting out of these crises, out of these disruptive moments the quickest with the more sustained long-term viability built behind how they, how they accelerate, that those organizations are the ones that are driving new experiences and new insights by really pushing hard on that digital agenda. In other words, digitally active companies seem to be the ones that are pivoting quicker out of these disruptions and coming out stronger as well. So what we're actually seeing is, is rather, you know, although there was an initial pause, as people start to pivot into that new normal, we're seeing now the acceleration of any kind of initiative or project that is underpinned by technology, which is fundamentally about reshaping the customer experience. And if you can do that through digital engagement models, then you can continue to drive revenue, you can continue to drive customer loyalty and advocacy and stickiness because you're, you're, you're executing that value transaction through, through digital platforms. So we're seeing a lot, I think we're seeing a really good healthy uptake now again as, as, as organizations pivot hard into that agenda, into, into going after their digital edge through a new kind of digital ambition, yeah. Do you think that the pandemic and the response even going to this uh, minimum viable operating model has made digital transformation more attractive. Uh, if you have to do more business digitally, if your consumers and your supply chain have become more digital, is this an opportunity? Why um, and how has the uh, ability to go digital enhanced the need to transform? Yeah, not just more attractive, I, I think more essential is what we're learning. Um, you know, the, the, a good example here in the UK, which is where I'm based, big retailers that you know have traditionally been been fed and watered on that on that four you know that brick walled experience of walking into a retail store grocery supermarket those kind of big physical spaces figuring out that actually during this period the way that they needed to continue to drive revenue and orders was on digital platforms well guess what those digital platforms were only scaled and sized for a certain kind of demand and that demand was based on a pre-normal you know the the, the poster the the the, um, the pre-normal situation now what they're having to do is double, treble the capacity of their transaction across that digital platform. They're having to massively increase their ability to not just buy online, but get deliveries um, out to those customers as well. Um, so it's not just an, uh, an attractive thing to do uh, from, for many organizations, pivoting hard to digital engagement and digital revenue streams. That is their new normal. That's what they're having to focus on, not just to preserve, actually to, to survive and beyond that. I think that points the direction to their new normal as well. Yes, it certainly seems that the behavior patterns of consumers as well as employees have probably changed uh, for the longer term when it comes to things like working at home, uh, using virtual uh, connections and collaboration, uh, bypassing movie theaters for online releases, virtual museum tours and so forth. 
Yeah. Uh, for those organizations that now have to cater to those online issues and factor in the uh, support of their employees online, uh, it seems to me that this has accelerated what was already underway. Um, yeah. Should companies then therefore pick up the pace of what they're doing for their own internal digital transformation, recognizing that the behaviors in the market have shifted so, so dramatically? Yeah, I, I really think that's a great, that's a key point. It, in the past, I think digital transformation has focused very much on the customer experience and the digital engagement channel and building out that, that experience. Um, but you could relate that in large parts to the shift towards, if you like, e-commerce and, 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 and that kind of vehicle of, of change. But I think increasingly what people are being aware of is now they need to integrate information about the physical space as well. And if this pandemic's taught us anything is, can I create great experiences, but can I create safe great experiences. So what does that mean? What do I need to understand about my physical space? How can I augment my, my, my service offering in a way that's safe to do so? So now we're looking at scenarios where using video recognition and AI to start working out, well, is that space being used safely? Are there measures we can put in place to protect people better? Are people keeping certain social distancing rules? You know, all of that is triggering for me the next wave of customer experience, which isn't just the the online digital platform, digital interaction. But as we get back out into the world and as we start to occupy those spaces again, how do I use the insight about the physical space to also augment that experience and make sure that we can we can emerge safer, better and and, and enjoying those kind of digital experiences in the way that uh, in a way that's safe to do so. So yeah, it's I think beyond just the, the CX side of it now, it's much more about you know starting to address the the movement that was already long underway, the digitization of the physical world, and how does that play into making these uh, these experiences more uh, more beneficial? Mm. So if the um, move to digitally transforming organization is an imperative, if those who did it earlier have an advantage, if those who haven't done it want to do it more rapidly. Uh, what holds back organizations from doing this? What is it about perhaps a siloed uh, legacy backend architecture and an installed uh, infrastructure? Why is that a handicap rather than something that can be simply uh, changed into what's needed for this new environment? Yeah, it's, it's a great question because if, you know, when I talk to customers about moving into the digital era, well, that kind of triggers the question, well, what was before the digital era? And we might argue it was the cloud era. That was that was preceding it. Now, don't get me wrong; these aren't sequential. I'm not for a second saying that the cloud era is over and the digital era has has replaced it. As you know, these these are waves and they and they rise on top of each other. But those organisations that are able to uh, go fast and accelerate on the digital agenda are often the same organisations that a few years ago invested very heavily in getting the the agility into their supply chain and the adoption of software defined and cloud-based architectures. And that of course means that, you know, they're able to scale on demand and, 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 and that architecture lends itself very well to huge exploration and innovation at the edge, no matter what the size and the scale is, because they know they've got that, they're equipped in their supply chain to be able to meet that demand very, very dynamically. So the biggest constraint we see organizations that are trying to stress test their digital edge is, do they actually have the agility in the back end? Are the systems set up to be able to scale on demand as they start to, to pivot towards uh, digital channels to engage their customers? Does that force some recalibration, if you like, of the supply chain? Are applications, is data placed at the right part of their either on or off-premise um, uh, cloud architected supply chain. So, so again, you're right, that that's where the constraint sits. Let's not forget for every bit of innovation we're trying to drive at the edge, there's big transactional systems that support the way that engagement um, is executed with the customer. And if you haven't gone through that modernization agenda, if you haven't tackled that core renovation issue, if you, if you haven't embraced cloud architectures and cloud scale and software defined, and increasingly, by the way, you know, the shift to things like containerization and, 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 and microservices and decomposing these big monolithic applications, as you say, back down into kind of manageable chunks that are API connected. If you, if you haven't gone through that cloud enabled exploration prior to the digital era well it looks like you still have some work to do before you can really start to get the gains that, that some of those organizations are now able to express 
And, and there's, a, there's one other constraint, which I think is really key as well. And, and it tends to be, for most of the customers we speak to, it tends to be in and around the operating model. So you'll see a lot of, you see a lot of conversations I have with customers, they're, they're, they're kind of almost over-invested in technology, right? They're, they're on every cloud platform available. Uh, they're using every kind of digital technology to, to gain some level of competitive advantage. And yet at the heart of any organization are, are, are the people, right? And, it, and, it, and it's the culture of the people and it's the innovation of, the, of, of your people which really make the difference. And so not least of all the supply chain agility, right in the heart of this conversation, I think, is the, is the fundamental operating model, not just of IT, but the operating model of the organization. So what are the, you know, have they unpicked their, their, their value chain? Have they looked at the key activities? Have they, have they thought when they, when they implement new technology, how that might replace or augment activities? And what does that mean to the staff? And can you bring them with you? And have you empowered them? Have you reskilled them along the way? Have you driven those cultural change programs to kind of force that digital first mindset, which is really, you know, the key, the key, the key to, uh, to success in all of this. And, and again, I think the examples where I've spoken to customers where that kind of innovation agenda dealing with people is at the heart of what they're trying to do. They're getting, I think, the quickest bang for the buck as well uh, when, we, when it comes to sort of identifying where the core constraints are. Don't, don't forget the people aspect, absolutely huge. Yeah, so many uh, interdependencies, so much uh, complexity, frankly, when we're thinking about transacting uh, across uh, you know, the external uh, edge to cloud, to, to uh, consumer, to uh, data center. We're th talking also about business processes that need now to extend uh, into new supply chains or into new markets. Um, given that there is a lot to bite off, uh, doing this in sort of an architected sequential methodological approach uh, seems key. Tell us a little bit about now how we progress from understanding how difficult this can be to how to actually do it uh, ways that are proven, ways that actually work. Yeah, well, I, 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 maybe I could share my screen here a little bit, uh, Dana, and, and, and walk you through some of the thinking that we've, uh, we've certainly seen. Um, so let me switch to sharing a screen here. So, so if you can see my screen, just give me the thumbs up on that and we'll, we'll, we'll crack on. Um, everything we've talked about, we've kind of managed to figure out that there is a kind of universal model that organizations can use to, to quote you, methodologically, uh, methodologically go after this, this space, easy word for me to say. Uh, on the, uh, on the left-hand side, what we found out is that organizations are very quickly pivoting to exploring their digital edge. I, I really think the digital agenda is an edge in conversation. And again, I think that marks it out from the preceding cloud era. That was much more about core out. That was get scale and efficiency and cost optimization service delivery models in place. But that was a, that was a, that was a very core out conversation. When, when you think digital, you've really got to start thinking, what's the use case where value is created or values exchange? And that's an edge in conversation. And we've managed to find that there's two, what we would call journeys behind that discussion. The first one is, is about um, deciding to whom you are looking to deliver that digital experience. So, so when you think about digital engagement, really caring passionately about who the beneficiary persona is behind that experience and being able to describe that person in, in terms of what's their day in the life? What, what pains do they face today? What gains could you develop that could deliver uh, better outcomes for them? How can you walk in their shoes and how you, can you describe that? What we found is that that is a really key journey. That's typically led by a kind of CDO type character who is you know, very much responsible for driving that new digital engagement with their, with their customers. If the persona is external to the customer, uh, so if it's, if it's a revenue generating persona, we might think of revenue as the key KPI, but you can apply similar techniques to be able to drive internal personas, uh, productivity, so productivity becomes the KPI. So that, that top left-hand journey is, is inspired by initiatives which are trying to use digital to connect to people in new and innovative and differentiated ways. And you'll find different stakeholders behind that journey. In the lower left-hand corner, we found another journey which is reshaping the edge, uh, Dana, and that's 
much more about using technology to digitize the physical world. So less hear about the experience, more hear about business efficiency and effectiveness at the edge and using the insights of instrumenting and digitizing the physical world to give you a sense of, okay, how, how is that space being used? How is my manufacturing floor performing? KPIs like OEE in the manufacturing space become very key. It's behind this journey that you'll see big industry 4.0 type, IOT type initiatives, uh, Dana, underway. And, and then I guess what we, what we found is that organizations that are able to stitch these two journeys together rather than treat them as siloed sand pits for innovation, if they can connect them together, they tend to get compound benefit. And what I mean by that is take the example we were just saying about now in this new normal, can we create great experiences, but can they be safe? So can we look at how a space is being used? Well, that's the lower left-hand corner because there we're using video sensor equipment to create a digital image of, of the space and, and then using AI to interpret that. That's the insight piece. But can you then provide that back to the consumers, the space that the people who are occupying that space through real time services to help improve their maybe worker safety, for example, help drive better productivity, but more safely because you've got insights about the space and how it's being used. So organizations that are connecting these two journeys together, I think are really getting a, a very much a compound benefit, Dana. Um, you asked me the question about where the constraint comes in. And of course, we've discussed that uh, in, in, in answer to your question. It, it is about getting this agility into the supply chain. And, and again, we've actually found that there's two connected journeys, but diff again, very different stakeholders behind them, uh, which is driving that agenda. In the lower right hand corner, you'll notice we have a journey that describes that core renovation um, agenda, which is, you know, occupies 70, 80% of every IT budget every year, the constant need to challenge the price performance of legacy environments and, and constantly optimizing and constantly moving workloads and data into the right part of the, of the supply chain for strategic, strategic advantage. But that is coupled together with another journey we identified on that, on that cloud enabled constraint. And that's very much more developer led Dana than it is led by IT. IT is typically holding the legacy footprint, the technical debt footprint, but the developer is out there looking to exploit those cloud native architectures uh, to, to write this new wave of applications and experiences. And they're just as impactful when it comes to equipping the organization with the cloud scale uh, that's necessary to go out and mine those opportunities over there on the edge. So there is a balance in this equation to your point. There's, there's, there's innovation at the edge, very much more line of business driven, very much more about you know, business efficiency and effectiveness or, or, or revenue and productivity, real kind of value, tangible value dollar outcomes. And on the right hand side is more about the agility in the supply chain. It's getting that balance right so that I've got my, my agility and that allows me to go and explore the world digitally at the edge. Um, and then we, I don't know if you can kind of make out, but we, we've kind of show these as a Venn diagram. So they sort of overlap. And the implication there is that what we found is that there's three core enablers. And, and these three core enablers are true no matter which of those big four agenda items customers are trying to drive through their initiative programs. And those two of those enablers very much relate to data. Again, Dana, I know in the digital era, data is everything. It, it, is, the, it is the glue that's going to hold this, uh, this, this new digital engagement model together. And in there, we found two key enablers that constantly come up, no matter which agenda you're driving. Uh, the first one is surely you need intelligence from that data, right? Data for its own sake is of no use. Getting some level of intelligence from that data set and again, not just to make better decisions, but actually to innovate, right? To, to, to create differentiated value propositions in your market. That's really the key agenda behind that intelligence enabler. And, and the second thing, because we're dealing with data again, is a huge impact and an emphasis on being trusted with that data. And that doesn't just mean being compliant to regulatory standards or you know, having the right kind of resiliency and cybersecurity approach. It means going beyond that, I think, in this, in this digitally enabled world, we, wanna, we want to trust brands 
with our data because often that data is now extremely personal. So beyond just kind of GDPR compliance, trust here means, am I being ethical? Am I being transparent about how I use that data? We all sort of saw the Cambridge Analytica type of, of, of impact of what happens when you're not transparent and you're not ethical about how you're using data. And then, you know, I, I explained it a little bit earlier, this whole impact around people and culture and you know, looking fundamentally at the, at the key activities in your operating model and how that operating model will need to shift as you press the accelerator pedal on these, on these agendas. Now, one thing we, we haven't touched, and I'll just throw it up as a bit of context, Dana. Um, there's a consideration, a kind of global consideration behind all of this agenda. And that's this whole shift towards everything as a service. Um, and, and, you know, I'm showing here a couple of key attributes of that consideration. Uh, the, first, uh, the first one, I suppose, is the most obvious one. It's the financial flexibility one. You can see it listed there. I mean, for sure, as you reassemble your supply chain, as you continue to press on that cloud-enabled side of the map, consuming what you're you know, paying for what you consume and doing that in a strategic way, getting the right mix into that supply chain and, and paying for that as you consume it is, is kind of obvious. But I, but I think the more important thing to understand is our customers are being equally innovative at their edge. And so they're using that everything as a service momentum to change their industry, to change their market, to change the relationship they have with their customers. And especially as they pivot into a, a digital customer experience, can that experience be constructed around a different business model and so everything as a service is, is a kind of global consideration. It belongs nowhere, and, it, and yet at the same time, it underpins and influences almost every decision that customers will make. So that's a kind of global, um, a global consideration behind this model. And so we found that's a really useful way of deconstructing and simplifying what is actually quite a complex landscape. And, and, and if you can abstract, you know, if you can, if you can use a model to kind of abstract away from the chaos and, and create some simplicity, at least in the visualization and the communication of, of a digital transformation. That, that's a really powerful thing. You know, we all know good models that, that abstract complexity and, and create simplicity. They're hugely valuable in, in the way that organizations construct themselves. So hopefully that made a little bit of sense and maybe backed up some of what we've just, just been talking about. Yes, no, very much so. Uh, Clearly, uh, before the pandemic, um, there were organizations that dragged their feet a bit, that uh, had a bit of uh, inertia. If it's too complex, if it's not broken, don't fix it. I don't want to mess with something and, and, and learn the hard way that I'm not uh, doing the transformation well. But the pandemic has spurred a lot of organizations, both public and private, on. And so to go through the undertaking to uh, do the hard work of transforming, not only, it seems to me, gives you resiliency, but you're going to be a far more agile a biz a business, uh, be able to uh, create new value in new ways for the future. So hopefully in just a matter of some number of months or even a few years, uh, the pandemic will be in the rearview mirror, but we'll be left with the legacy of it, which is an emerging business paradigm of being flexible, agile, and more productive. But what, what does the, uh, the payoff then, um, is it commensurate with the, with the work? Are we going to get more than just uh, a, a ability to deal with crisis? Are we going to, in fact, get a new mode of business uh, agility? Yeah, I mean, that's the $6 million question you're, you're asking that, Dana. I, I would love to crystal ball gaze with you a little bit on that one because, you know, agility is key to any organization, and we all know that. What One thing we're learning is that there are constraints in kind of traditional customer experiences, that, the, you know, making widgets, selling products, transactional relationships, um, relationships that, that don't lend themselves to being, um, having digital value added to them. They, they, I, I wonder how long that that, that model goes on for as we as we're experiencing this this shift towards digital value and that means you know not just selling the widget or the product but augmenting that with digital capabilities with digital insights with new ways of of adding value to the customer's experience uh, beyond just the the, the capital um, uh, the capital asset 
Um, I, I, I actually think that was, that was being fast tracked before this, this global pandemic. Um, and it's organizations that are now in the midst of saying, we need to double down on that, getting that digital experience, right? I think it was Gartner that said this year, we're gonna be seeing the rise of CX, of customer experience ahead of product and price as the key differentiator when you, when you go to market. And for me, that customer experience increasingly now is, is the digital customer experience. Um, you know, I think, I think that move was well underway before we, before we hit this big crisis. And I can see customers now doubling down so that if they didn't get it right pre-pandemic, they're getting it right as they accelerate out of the pandemic. They recognize that that, that platform uh, is, is the only way forward. You'll hear a lot of commentators talk about the digital agenda as being driven by what they call the platform-driven economy. Can you create a platform in which your customers are willing to participate? Maybe even your ecosystem of partners are willing to participate and create that kind of shared experience and shared value. Um, again, that's something that HPE is very much uh, invested in. As we pivot our business model, by the way, to an everything as a service outcome, we're having to double down on our customer experience. And increasingly, that means digitizing that experience again through that digital platform agenda. Ray, I'd like to explore some examples of how this is manifesting itself. Uh, organizations are adjusting to the new normal and then leveraging that to a higher level of business capability. But before we do the examples, let's uh, examine Point Next Services. Why is a third party organization working within an ecosystem model with many years of experience behind it a part of the equation? How are you specifically gearing up to help organizations uh, manage this process that we've been describing? Yeah, well, I think what this this whole kind of revolution of what's going on is it's requiring different engagement models. Uh, and I mean that by um, the relationship that HPE shares with its customers is really becoming a partnership, a much more technologically enabled partnership. And whenever you partner with a customer to help advance their business outcomes, uh, you need a different way to engage with them. And, I, and, and that, that's not a... You know, we, we can continue to have our product led engagement with customers because, you know, they, they, they enjoy that relationship. Um, but as we continue to move up the value stack, we're going to need to swing that towards more of an advisory led engagement model, Dana, with customers where we are as invested, co-invested in the customer's outcomes as they are. We understand what they're trying to drive from a business perspective. We understand how technology is opening up and enabling those kind of outcomes but to be materialized, right? To, to, for the value to be realized. And so, you know, a good year ago, we set out on a course to uh, really shape the way that we engage customers around this conversation and to drive that kind of digital partnership. Um, and we found that that means, you know, it's, uh, it's about sitting down with a customer and, and, and being prepared to co-innovate, right? You've been going through those workshops of, how we as technologists can bring our expertise to the customer as the expert in their industry and how can those two minds meld to create you know more than one plus one equals two using you know design thinking techniques and, and co-design techniques to to really look at you know analyze the customer's business problem and shape solutions that manufacture really really big outcomes for our customers. So, so it's really important that Point Next Services, which is, uh, you know, always had a, you know, I've been 15 years consultant in inside HP and HPE, and we've always had that strong consulting engine. But now we're gearing it around making sure that we're able to address the customer's business outcomes enabled through technology. And the timing is right on this, Dana. It, never more has there been a time when technology has been so welded into a customer's underlying value proposition. You know, in the past, I think over the last 20, 30 years, and I've been 25 years in, in IT, we could have gotten away with being a good partner to IT right? in, inside of our customer accounts. We could have gotten away with constantly challenging that price and performance ratio and constantly, you know, renovating that agenda so that it delivers better productivity to the organization. But as technology makes its way into the, the, the underlying business model, right? So as it becomes the differentiating business model, it's no longer just a productivity question. Now it's can partners 
work with me to unlock new digital revenue streams? Well, that needs a new engagement model. And so that's the work that we've been doing in my team in the digital advisory and transformation practice is engaging customers in that value-based discussion. And because technology has made its way into that value proposition, there's never been a more open door policy from our partners and customers that, that want to engage in that dialogue because they genuinely want to get the benefit of a large tech company applying themselves to the customer's underlying business challenge. That's, that's the partnership that they want. Um, and there's no excuse for us not to walk through that door very confidently anymore. Craig, when it's specifically about where HPE Point Next Services is now in its evolution and why that's provided a strength and an opportunity in the market for you all, what's the, uh, the secret sauce that's allowed you to be in a good position to help in this uh, large undertaking of digital transformation? Yeah, that's a great and timely question. Uh, Dana, the development of this model has led to a series of unique pieces of IP that we, we use this model to help advance that customer ambition. And here's why it's so relevant right now. Um, I don't think there's ever been a moment in time uh, quite like it is with the digital conversation. Customers recognize that technology is the fundamental weapon to to really transform and, digit and, and, and differentiate themselves in the market. They're reaching out to technology partners to say, come and participate with me using technology to fundamentally change my value proposition. So we're being invited in now as a tech company to help organizations move that, that value proposition forward um, in a way that we never were before. In, in the past, HPE's pedigree, of course, has been constantly challenging you know, the, the, the optimization of, of assets and constantly challenging the price performance and making sure that platform services are delivered in a very efficient, effective way. But here's now that moment in time in the industry where customers are looking to, to partners like HPE to uniquely under, you know, go underneath the covers of their business model, not just their operating model, but their business model. Now that doesn't make us, you know, we, we're not, we're not writing the, 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 the board level strategy for digital ambition because there's a, there's, a, there's a great little sweet spot for us. And where it is, is customers that have some digital kind of North Star, some digital ambition, but they're struggling to realize it. They're struggling to land those initiatives that are, that are now by definition technology enabled. And that's where tech companies like HPE really are at the forefront of driving that digital ambition. So with this unique IP, this model that we developed inside HPE Point Next, and the methodology of how to apply it, so how to use it as a visualization tool, as a storytelling tool, to be able to better communicate, onward communicate your digital ambition, or whether it's mapping on the initiatives and looking at where those overlaps and duplications occur inside organizations, because we're really truly looking at this from edge to cloud and as a service. That, that kind of holistic side of the, of the map really helps us unpick some of the risks and dependencies and prerequisites. Whether it's using the map to inspire new ideas, where we advance a customer's new thinking about how technology might be enabled, or, or if it's just using the map as we do with our building blocks behind each one of these journeys, knowing what digital capabilities need to be brought on stream and in what sequence so that we can de-risk a customer's path to value. That, that's a great moment in time for us, and, and it's kind of uniquely ours. Certainly the model is uniquely ours, and the way we apply it is uniquely ours. But it's also a timing thing, Dana. There's never been a better time in the industry where customers are seeking for that advice from a, from a technology giant like HPE. So it's kind of a, it's a mixture of having the right IP and actually having the right opportunity. The moment is right as well. Uh, I wonder uh, as we exit, uh, how organizations should start to think about approaching this. Uh, we talked about the methodology of what to do when you get there. Sometimes just getting over the hump of initiating uh, into something like this can be uh, daunting, can be uh, 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 and, you know difficult. How do we start the process, Ian? Um, how do people get fully engaged on being uh, transformative and being a new type of business? Yeah, well, so I mean, first of all, it starts by understanding that there is a description of this complex landscape, and, and, and we sort of explored that in this in this podcast. Begin to visualize your own digital ambition through that. See if you can take two or three top initiatives that you're driving and explore them across the map. So what's the, the overriding KPI? Where does it start? 
Then ask yourself the questions in the middle of the map. What are the key enablers? Am I, am I addressing a shared intelligence backbone? How am I handling trust and security and resiliency? What am I doing to look at the operating model and the people and the culture that's central to all of this? How am I going to provide it as a service? Or am I going to consume component parts as a service? How does it stress over into the supply chain? How is it addressing the experience? So I think the map is a beautiful tool to help any customer today start to plot their own initiatives and saying, well, am I thinking of this initiative in a, in a fully 360 way? If you're stuck at that, come and ask HPE. A lot of my advisors around the world, what we do with customers is actually map their initiatives onto this framework and we start to ask questions. Um, we start to unveil some of the risks and dependencies and prerequisites. As you put more and more initiatives and programs on here, you can begin to see that, that duplication in the middle of the model play out and that and that enables customers to de-risk and quicker quicker path to value because they can deduplicate what they can now see is actually a common shared digital backbone often customers are running those in isolation but seeing it through this lens helps them deduplicate that effort that's quicker path to value uh, we do a lot around ideation design thinking if customers have yet to figure out a digital initiative what's their north star you know what where where should they start uh, again, we, we engage customers around one to two day ideation workshops. Those are very structured ways of having creative outside of the box type thinking and really putting in enough of a value proposition behind the idea to excite people. And then if you've got a great idea, maybe it's one we've co-innovated with you or you, you know, you've kind of got an area. We had, a, we had a customer in Italy come to us and say, well, we think we need to do something with AI, but we're not quite sure where the value is. Then we have a way of engaging to help you accelerate. And that's really about identifying what the critical digital capabilities are. Think of it at the functional level first. What digital functions do I need to be able to achieve some level of outcome? And then get that into some kind of backlog so you know how to sequence it. And again, we work with customers to help do that as well. So there's lots of ways to slice this, but you know, ultimately dive in, get an initiative on the map, start looking at the risks and dependencies as you map it through the framework. Are you asking the right questions? Is there a connection to another part of the map that you haven't examined yet that you should be examining? Is there a part of the initiative that you've missed? That, that I think is the immediate get-go start point. Well, very good. I'm afraid we'll have to leave it there. We've been examining how to better architect businesses for not only managing ongoing disruption, but to get to a new and better way of doing business. And we've learned how HPE Point Next Services advises organizations on using digital transformation to take advantage of new and emerging market opportunities. So please join me in thanking our guests. We've been here with Craig Partridge, Senior Director Worldwide, Digital Advisory and Transformation Practice Lead at HPE Point Next Services. Thank you so much, Craig. Thanks, Dana. It was great to speak to you again. And thanks as well to our audience for joining this sponsored Briefings Direct Voice of Innovation discussion. I'm Dana Gardner, Principal Analyst of Intra Arbor Solutions, your host for this ongoing series of HPE supported discussions. Thanks again for listening. Please pass this along to your IT community and do come back next time.